Welcome to the Juniper Threat Labs attack demo series. Today's subject is DBAT loader malware. This video will demonstrate how malicious threat actors conduct this multi-stage malware attack. But let's begin first with an introduction to DBAT loader malware. DBAT loader is a malicious Windows executable PE file with a .exe extension. It's particularly dangerous as it loads other malware such as Formbook, a family of data stealing malware. In the example you're about to see, rather than download Formbook malware, DBAT Loader instead downloads a remote access Trojan, or RAT. RATs are malware that permit attackers to remotely control the infected victim's PC. Some of the RATs loaded by DBAT Loader malware include Remcos RAT and Netwire RAT. In this particular attack, you will see DBAT Loader malware download the Remcos RAT. Additionally, the threat actors behind this campaign were found to be abusing the public cloud infrastructure. DBAT Loader malware currently targets European companies. It uses phishing emails to lure its victims. The emails are deceptive in that they appear to come from legitimate companies, perhaps with which the targeted victim company may do business and or may wrongly think is the authentic actual company. As you can see from the attack chain, unlike our most recent video about Royal Ransomware, DBAT Loader malware has multiple stages, which help it to hide from some detection engines. The first stage is a phishing campaign. It begins with an email sent to the prospective victim, usually about a purchase order. The email contains a PDF attachment that looks like an invoice, but is actually an image with a hyperlink that reads VIEW SECURED DOCUMENT in all caps in the center of the doc. Clicking that results in the victim downloading the next stage of the attack. The malware then downloads a cabinet file. In the .cab file is what to the unsuspecting user looks to be another PDF this time with the revised order, but it's not a PDF at all. Instead, it's a link file or LNK file disguised as a PDF. Link files are Microsoft Windows shortcuts. They point to another file, folder, or application. When the LNK file is clicked or extracted in this case, the LNK file disguised as a PDF because of the double extension downloads the DBAT loader executable, i.e. the next stage, and executes it with PowerShell. Inside this executable is the Remcos RAT, which when run, injects this RAT into the victim system's memory. Now with the background on DBAT loader malware out of the way, next up in this video, Juniper Threat Labs demonstrates all of the stages of this attack. Afterward, if a system were to be compromised, such as by a zero-day attack, let's say, such as when the DBAT loader first appeared in the wild, Juniper makes it easy for its customers to provide protection for the rest of the network. We'll show you how you can detect, block, and isolate an infected system using a Juniper SRX firewall with ATP Cloud. Let's get started. We're demonstrating this attack in a contained environment to show how it works. The victim here received a phishing email from the malicious threat actor with an attachment entitled revised order document.pdf. The malicious threat actor used a real company in the email footer, so we are obscuring that from view. We start Wireshark and Process Monitor to show you the network activity and process activity on the victim system. When the unsuspecting victim opens the PDF attachment, it looks like he or she has received a valid purchase order. The user is duped into believing that in order to view the actual secured document, he or she must click on View Secured Document. As soon as the user clicks this, the malware goes to that URL and downloads revised underscore order underscore document dot cab. This cabinet file contains an LNK file. Inside it disguised as a PDF. In the way the victim is viewing file names, it appears to have a PDF extension, but it doesn't. Notice under the file name, Windows indicates the file is a quote unquote shortcut. When the victim unwittingly opens the file, he or she is prompted to extract the file. In this case, the victim decides to extract the file to the downloads folder. Navigating to the downloads folder, the victim user double clicks the extracted file. Because it is a link file, 
Rather than a PDF, the contents of the link file instruct the victim system to run a PowerShell command that downloads and installs DBAT Loader. In the process monitor, you can see PowerShell here is running. And here too in process monitor, highlighted in green, is the Remcos rat or remote access trojan. Here it is named file.exe, and for the purposes of deception has a PowerPoint icon. File.exe, the Remcos rat, was run after the PowerShell script retrieved and ran another file. Checking Wireshark's output, we see both files that were downloaded with HTTP GET requests in this attack. The second one downloaded with the highlighted long, unpronounceable name is the DBAT loader malware that once executed injects file.exe, aka the Remco's remote access trojan, into the victim's system. Now we will simulate the DBAT loader malware attack again, but this time the victim is protected with the Juniper SRX firewall and Juniper ATP cloud. Even so, for this part of the video we want to demonstrate how Juniper Connected Security Solutions can detect, block, and isolate an infected system. In order for us to demonstrate that, be aware that the malware has to initially go undetected. For the demo, Juniper Threat Labs is using the following setup. We have a VSRX pictured in the center. The VSRX is a virtual SRX firewall providing network security protection. Its purpose is to inspect network traffic and, with the assistance of Juniper ATP Cloud, to detect malware like DBAT Loader. In addition to the virtual firewall and cloud-based protections, we are using the Juno Space Security Director, which is a centralized management system. Security Director facilitates our configuring and monitoring of the VSRX firewall, and we are using Juniper's Juno Space Policy Enforcer as well. Juniper's Juno Space Policy Enforcer enforces security policies on endpoints and ensures they comply with corporate security standards. Pictured as well are several Windows workstations, each of which is connected to the VSRX. There is an Ubuntu server, which is acting as the malware download server. We will be using one of the Windows hosts as a jump station to connect to the victim's host using RDP, and from there launching the attack. Before we proceed with the DBAT loader attack simulation, let's first take a look at the threat prevention policy that we've set up on our security director and applied to the VSRX. To access the policy, we'll navigate to the Configure tab and then select Threat Prevention and Policies. As you can see, we already have an existing policy in place. Let's further inspect the protections being enforced by the applied policy. For this demo, our policy is configured to block command and control traffic at threat level 8 and above. We've also set it up to block infected hosts at threat level 8 and above. Additionally, we've configured our policy to use ATP Cloud for malware detection, and as you can see, we've elected to scan both HTTP downloads and email attachments. Finally, we've chosen to block any and all threats rated at level 7 and above. This threat prevention policy applied to the Juniper VSRX firewall is a critical component of our defenses protecting our systems against malware-related attacks, including DBAT Loader. It allows us to detect and block malicious traffic as well as the activity of potentially infected hosts, which will then prevent the spread of malware throughout our network in the event that one of our systems gets compromised. Acting as would-be malicious threat actors for the demo, we now connect to the victim system via RDP. To confirm that we have internet connectivity, we visit Wikipedia and YouTube. Later, we will show you that once the VSRX has identified this host as being infected, it will then be isolated from the network. Once that occurs, this infected host will be prevented by the Juniper Connected Security Solutions from using the internet connection. Recall that for the attack, the targeted victim was sent a phishing email with a PDF attachment. And opening the victim's email, here it is. Next, we start Wireshark to show the network activity. Specifically, we will want to look at the HTTP activity. 
which will show the malicious file downloads. Simulating the victim, we open the malicious PDF attachment. We then click on the malicious URL on the file, and when we do, it downloads the cabinet file. The victim then extracts the file inside, which is a link file, an LNK file, disguised as a PDF. As soon as we double click on the malicious link file, which invokes PowerShell, the malware downloads the malicious DBAT loader executable. Let's check this out in Wireshark. The bottommost HTTP GET request shows the effect of clicking on the LNK file disguised as a PDF, namely the retrieval of DBAT loader. Though there was no sandbox analysis performed at any stage of the attack sequence, and had there been, then we wouldn't have gotten this far. Even so, at this point, Juniper SRX, with the help of ATP, has detected the attack. To show that the attack was detected by SRX, we go over to our security director. From the monitor tab, we click on threat prevention, and then HTTP file download. Doing that, we see that there was a file downloaded from silverline.com.sg that was detected at threat level 10. You may recognize that file name by now, as you have seen it several times in this video. That's the DBAT loader malware executable. By clicking on that row, we can view detailed information about this malware, including static analysis that Juniper performs on the malware. We also see behavior analysis and network activity. As we'd said earlier, DBAT loader is making use of the public cloud infrastructure. This here is a Microsoft-owned IP address. In Security Director, we can also see the malware's behavior details. And we can look at the MITRE attack vectors that it uses. Next, and again using Juno Space Security Director, this time we'll look at the ATP Cloud Host tab. Here we can show you that the infected victim system has been added to the set of infected hosts, as the host was identified at threat level 9. Clicking in on the host, we can learn more. Earlier, recall that we'd configured the VSRX to block hosts at threat level 8 and above. That explains why the VSRX smartly blocked this infected host. In this case, Juniper's security director tells the security admin that it was blocked as a result of a malicious file download. If we go back to our victim host, you can see that it no longer has internet connectivity. Once we're sure that the DBAT loader infected host is free from infection, we'll want to restore the infected system back to the network. To do so, we go to Security Director and click on the infected host. To the right of the investigation status, we select Resolved Fixed. Afterwards, the host status is now clean, and the host is connected once again to the network and able to operate as before.
Now that the infection has been resolved, we can verify that the host is back online by pinging systems on the internet and by visiting sites like YouTube through the browser, both of which demonstrate restored connectivity. That completes our demo of dbatloader malware. Check out more videos from the Juniper Threat Labs attack demo series by visiting juniper.net. Thanks for watching.